Um, so today I'm going to be concluding my infertility story. If you haven't watched my one, please, the links are up here. Go ahead and please watch them so that you can be up to speed with what um, the, the um, events that have happened so far. So my IVF journey started and started in the beginning of 2022. I started out doctors gave me a number of medication to start taking i wanted to just come on here and um, show you guys that i've become a drug addict now this journey started on the, on the most serious note now since this journey started with ivf i don't fear medicine anymore like if you knew me before if i want to take just a tablet like maybe panadol i would contemplate over it for at least 30 minutes before i now decide to take it and most times i would like to take them with um juice or water but in this process i've been taking a lot and a lot of medicines like before the process started after the surgery and everything they told me to start taking some medicine which i'll show you and i thought that was a lot because it was a lot for every day but when i started x stimulation that i am on now they basically made me like i started taking a lot more medicines like in a day i swallow up to 20 tablets no jokes i basically have to, had to set alarm for a number of them so i have my pregnant care tablet here so i'm supposed to take one a day so i was also taking this drug called dh dhea 25 milligrams i'll take i was supposed to take three in it every day extra folic acid so i know that the, the pregnant care already has folic acid for I don't know, I did my own research and I found out, you know, it doesn't have to have more. I also listened to one girl on Instagram, I'll be on YouTube, who said that um, she took extra vitamin D supplements to help her. So I have this vitamin D supplement that I'm taking as well. So I take one every day as well. So pregnant care also has vitamin D, but I'm just substituting because. You know why not then i was asked to take 200 milligrams of this so basically now when it was now time for egg stimulation they told me that i needed to now add some extra medicine so the first thing they told me to add which i got from the hospital is this medicine here yeah it's called provera so they asked me to yeah to be taking it every so i'm supposed to take this is it is time based so i'm supposed to take it like every 10 a.m the second thing they gave me and they told me that i needed to add was aspirin so the next thing that they asked me to be taking every day was osteocare so i have this medicine that i take by 10 10 p.m every day after i've taken my nine o'clock injections i take this from the hospital as well it's called dexamethasone last thing that i'm supposed to have every morning every night as well is this drug here called uh, melatonin i'm not sure why they recommended this but honestly i can think i can say that i feel the effect of it because according to the doctor IVF is stressful so this is supposed to help me sleep better and helps to prevent some headaches i guess and this is 13 tablets have a look at all the medicines that I take in a day by the way if you're thinking the medicine is done it's not done so guys <laughs> these injections are in the fridge because they are meant to be cold so I just dedicated the entire bottom half of my <laughs> of my fridge for them so basically um, yeah basically these are the go now F pens I've currently gone through three 
I've used up three of the pens. This is what the needle looks like. And this is how tiny the needle is as well. So I'm just going to throw this away because I did not use Okay, so the second and the final injection that I was given to be taken, which is the, it's a little bit harder, is this one called Menopore. You had the water and then the actual medicine. So, okay, I think it's supposed to improve your FS, FSH hormone or something. So yeah, this is how it came, water and this, water and this. So yeah, I've used up a lot. I remember whenever um, I went to the hospital and they took my blood, because they'll take your blood to check how much eggs you have. And they check and they say, oh, my reserve is very low. And I'll say, doctor, why is my reserve low? And he'll say, because they removed one ovary. That's why your, your reserve is low. And they also, he will also tell me that even before I remove one ovary, that I've always had low egg reserve. For every woman, you have a total number of eggs that you're born with. But he'll tell me that I've always had a low egg reserve. But that now that they've taken out one ovary, the reserve is very, 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 very low. So that if they cannot find an egg that will come that they can use for the IVF, I'll have to use donor eggs. Donor eggs means you're getting somebody else's egg. So essentially, the, even though you carry the baby, that your DNA is not in that baby's DNA. Does that make any sense? That was what I was contending with because as we started the IVF, another problem came, low egg reserve. So they, they boosted me, gave me so much medication. I was taking it, hoping that by, by, so that by the time I go for egg collection, they would have enough eggs to collect this is where i put my injections because as i work i'm not sure when i am able to um i'm going to be get, able to get home on time and i take my injections nine o'clock every day i have two injections to take every single day so the thing about the injections is that they need to be cold they need to be yeah cold so i have an ice pack inside here i have all my needles i have my alcohol sanitizer i have the two injections here and i have extra needles in case of anything i also have an ice pack so yeah so um so what i do is every night after taking i just put everything back and any day anytime i have to go out even if it's just down the road or to you know down to the mall or something i just take it in case of anything so that i'm never caught without it in case i'm out at a certain time in the night and i needed to take my medicine my injection sorry and then i have two needles they also gave me a bar a disposable trash can thing where i put all my needles yeah let me just go right ahead and then start it's already nine o'clock or it's almost nine o'clock I just remember that during this IVF process, sometimes I'll be in traffic, I'll have to inject myself. Like it was a whole lot. Like I'll be maybe in the office working late, and I remember that oh, I have to go to the toilet and give myself my injections, and I'll go to the toilet. I remember there was a part time that we were in traffic on the way home in Lagos traffic at like 10 p.m. I had to give myself the injection 
with some colleagues of mine at the back i don't know how i managed to do it that they didn't see like it was a real struggle like if i was to go and hang out with my friends i had to get up in the middle of the dinner or whatever go to the toilet and inject myself but i took it on in good faith basically hi guys so good morning um yeah so today is um Today will make it like I think 11 days since I started giving myself the injections and um, yeah I'm currently in the hospital so what they've been doing is every two days since I started I've been coming here for the, ch to the check to see how well my ovaries are developing not ovaries sorry how well my eggs are developing how many follicles there are and I was very very happy because the first time, which was after two days I started using it, they asked me to reduce my dose of the injections because I was doing so well. Like I had about 10 follicles and right now, the last time I came, I had about 14. So this is my third time here. So yeah, I'm very positive. I'm very happy. Um, I've been taking all my medication. In addition to everything they gave me, I've been taking extra vitamin D, extra folic acid. I've been taking cloves in the morning. I don't know if those have any effect. I was supposed to start acupuncture, but I don't have the money for that right now. Like, this is actually a lot. And I learned that acupuncture is majorly for towards the embryo transfer time. So, yeah, I left that. Uh, so yeah, I'm here for my, um, I'm definitely going to be having my egg collection sometime this week. So today is Monday, so maybe Wednesday or Thursday, according to my doctor, that's when I will have my egg collection. But for now, I'm here to just basically see how well the follicles are growing. So. Um, today is the day of my egg collection. So I'm in the clinic. I am. This is the room that I've been assigned, and um, yeah, I'm supposed to change into the gown and put on my hair thing. So I'm going to take off this week. So compared to the first time, I feel less bloated. Like that first time, I felt like my stomach was, you know, really, really um, big some pain i just started feeling pain today at the lower end of my stomach um it's just like it's a combination of me being a little bit bloated and then being i don't know the english to use it but it's not as bad as the first time um, let me discuss some of the symptoms that i had um, with this whole idea see i was stressed i would say i was stressed by let me see 20 percent out of 100 in terms of my reaction to the medicine the only side effect i had was like headaches occasionally especially during the first stimulation i had a lot of headaches in the night after taking the injection um i don't know if that was part of it but then i also noticed that um i had like an aversion towards um meat i suddenly was not interested i didn't crave for meat during the first stimulation i had very sore breasts like very very sore like extremely sore breasts but this time around it's not the same it's not as sore as it was the first time over um i don't feel as bloated as i was the first time as well um generally in terms of skin i didn't break out i didn't have any ridiculous breakouts or anything like that um what else weight gain i think feeling bloated just makes you feel fat i don't know if i gained weight i stopped checking because it was just de depressing the hell out of me but i think if i would say i gained weight it wasn't more than or up to 5 kg but i don't know if i really gained i know i've added a lot of weight but that was even before i started this and i, I plan to lose the weight <laughs> Hi guys, just finished. Uh, just finished the egg collection. It took literally thirty minutes. This time was a bit different. They made me, they gave me local anesthesia from my back, which I thought was painful. I enjoyed 
previous experience compared to this one and it was done in like 30 minutes but then i feel like um i, I had to be wheeled in because i couldn't stand up properly the only other thing is that i feel like my body is itching very badly everywhere like my armpits everywhere is itching me and like my body feels heavy like my feet feel very very heavy but at least it's done so yes what do you want to say about the experience nothing <laughs> <laughs> you know you this is something why are you running away okay. you're, you're running away <laughs> He's running away, I don't know why. So I did this and um, I think overall I got four eggs. The first round I did, I got to be able to get four eggs. We fertilized those four eggs and it came out that, um, I, I sorry, I had more than four eggs. But by the time they fertilized everything, the only surviving ones were um, four, em four embryos. On a request by the doctor, I did another I did another round of um what's it called now? I did another round of um egg um ret ret retrieval process. I went through the process of doing injection again, taking the medication again, it was a constant and then I did the second um egg collection and I got five embryos. So altogether I had nine em em embryos waiting so at this point when they have done this they told me okay yes madam congratulations you have nine embryos in the freezer ah oh, god i was so happy i have nine embryos look at me that they didn't they thought i would use donut eggs now i have nine embryos i was so happy like it was a thing of joy like the day i told my husband i think we even went out because we we're very happy that you know we have nine solid embryos we can decide to take two now let's just keep praying that when they transfer it, it sticks and then and that you know I carry my baby because if there's a possibility that it, it cannot stick, it, it might not stick as well. But for the longest time, we had always planned that we would want to transfer the embryos in July after we come back from holiday. Anyways, after we finished all the scans, um, all the um, egg collections and everything, we met with my doctor who then said that they would do he wants to scan my womb again to make sure everything is clear and to make sure that that mass that they removed had not come back so we went to scan the womb and as he scanned the womb he told me madam you have polyps in your womb we need to remove the polyps ha i said another surgery he said no this one is not is, is not as open as the first one and in my head i was just like which one is this one that I'll have surgery? They will say they, 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 they did not see everything. And then now they want to do another procedure to remove some polyps that they, they said they've seen in my um, my womb before they can transfer the embryos. Yeah, they numbed me and I went in to have the hysteroscopy, which is the procedure there that is done to remove polyps from the womb. And I had that... Um, procedure that was the procedure i had before i was to travel to zanzibar so as soon as i finished that procedure they told me that my period because of the procedure that my period might be late in coming um but that as soon as it comes i should let them know that it had come so um let's say um it was after that procedure my period was supposed to come like two weeks after two weeks after the period didn't come so i because they had they had told me that the period would delay i said it's normal that the period would delay in fact try out ivf because once, once i started taking the medication for the of the ivf my cycle started to dis to distort so it wasn't coming at the time it was going to come as if i if if if, if i hadn't been taking the ivf medication so i thought it was normal so um I went to zanzibar and I was expecting the period to come but because they told me that the period wasn't going to come because of that procedure I wasn't very keen I wasn't eager for it to come and I didn't my mind did not go to pregnancy or anything went to Zanzibar I, I, I let my head down I drank alcohol I I did everything that you know I'd been curious and um, keeping away from all this while I, I drank tea I drank hibiscus which is more like zobo 
I did different things because at this point I had gotten my nine em embryos and I was going back to Nigeria to transfer them. But throughout my stay in Zanzibar for 10 days, I didn't get my period and I didn't, it crossed my mind that I could be pregnant but I didn't think it would be possible because like I said, they took out my one ovary, they took out one panopian tubes, they tied my tube, the second so, 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 surviving tube, they tied it, which is a permanent method of contraception for many people. There is also the issue of having fluid in my fallopian tubes. So even if I even get pregnant with the tight tubes, that fluid will kill the baby. So in my head, I wasn't thinking that it could happen naturally. Like natural was not in my mind at all. And so, um, the rest is history. I came back to Nigeria and went to the hospital and found out that no, came back to Nigeria, I took a pregnancy test which I'm going to leave the video up here of how I found out I was pregnant and I found out that I was pregnant. Guys, go and watch my video to see my reaction. I was very confused, I was in disbelief and I kept thinking to myself that if, I'm, if I have happened to be pregnant, it might be an ectopic pregnancy because many, many, many times when your tubes are tied and you've taken is usually an ectopic pregnancy so this was what i was thinking about in my head i never i don't understand or i didn't understand that it's just an act, an act of miracle from god that i was pregnant at that time even with all the negative reports that i had received from the doctors so um yes you guys that's how i found out i was pregnant despite everything despite cancer despite fibroid, despite hypothyroidism, despite polyps in my womb, despite the negative reports, despite the dermoid cyst, despite everything. This is how I found out I was pregnant naturally. How? Like, which is why if you watch that video of mine, I kept saying naturally. How? How? Naturally. Like, it made me believe now. Like, you know when they say what God cannot do does not exist. What he cannot do does not i'm very very sure it does not exist because how is it me without fallopian tubes i took him are you hearing that i took him without fallopian tubes the hydrosal things that they said was there that would harm the baby it did not like number one the pregnancy was not ectopic it was a full pregnancy lodged in the womb Secondly, the hydrosal things disappeared. Like how? It's an act of God and I think God waited till the last minute, the very last minute. Imagine I was supposed to come back from Zanzibar and go and transfer the embryos and then be pregnant. God waited till the last minute just so he takes the glory for himself. He didn't want me to transfer it and then I take it and then they, they wouldn't know whether or not it was the transfer they did that made me that made me pregnant or the maybe I took it naturally God wanted the glory for himself so he did everything he, he made me go through all that process to prove to me that he's still a God and let me now even tell you something different all this while we had been planning and working hard on getting um, Can Canadian permanent residency since I met my husband we have, we have been planning this process and everything happened as if God like God planned everything accordingly because God planned it in, in such a way that I basically took in and then as soon as I found out I was pregnant the next month we got our um if, if it, what's it called we got our permanent residency stuff that we should um, start coming to Canada meaning that we're going to have this baby in Canada meaning that this baby, baby was going to be a Canadian citizen like so many doors just kept opening financially as well as soon as I found, found out that I was going to conceive God arranged everything to happen in, in such a way that there's no doubt in my heart that it is the hand of God that is on my life you know this whole experience it has it's honestly made me grow it has honestly made me grow and I know that this story 
can touch a trying to conceive mom out there a trying to conceive woman someone that is trying to conceive that is even in my in the same shoes that i am in what i'll say is that don't give up because this god that we're serving is not a god that 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 plays honestly he's a god that will use you as a testimony grace is upon my life and i know it's only an act of god um I, you know, I said before that I never believed that the prayers worked. I never believed that I could pray for Panopian tubes to open and to take in. I can't ever believe that, you know, God can say a word and then shame the doctors. I never believed it until it happened to me. Then I really believed that what God cannot do, it does not really exist. That with our God, all things are possible. I started to believe, believe that. If not, that it happened to me. And, you know, the thing I'll say again is that I can't forget the encounters I had with different people like with my friends, with my family, my husband's sisters, they were all amazing like the support was really 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 amazing like nobody pressured me, everybody was more of like lending a listening ear and I know that, that people that might be going through infertility when you tell them pe people don't like to talk about it because they feel like they don't want to pride and being in someone else's business but in my own experience i don't know about other people but for me i i appreciated it when someone that i was close to opened up and spoke to me about it i felt some kind of way if i knew that someone close to me had not asked me about it i, I, would, I would feel some some kind of way so i felt better speaking about it with my with my friends with people not not all my friends or speaking about it with my close friends and telling them what I was going through because I knew that they would keep my confidence in that way. So I really appreciated all the people that reached out, people that sent me morning prayers, even some strangers. Some people were not bold, bold enough to ask me what was wrong, but they would constantly send me morning prayers, tell me to join, tell me to pray, send me prayers here and there. Like I appreciate all you guys. Like you guys are heaven sent. Honestly, people people put me in their prayer point. Like. You guys, you guys, like people around me were really, really, really amazing. Um, I also remember the way I used to feel when a friend of mine maybe gets pregnant and she doesn't really tell me. I start to feel like maybe she's not telling me because she doesn't. She she she's feeling sorry for me. I'll feel so bad. And I understand now that I'm pregnant. I understand maybe what that they were going through because even me, I didn't tell everybody. I now understand why they um. They would do that and maybe not inform me that they were pregnant but at that time when i was still hoping on god i'll take it personal but like that's all foolishness right now um even the fact that i was hiding from family i was missing family events i didn't want to go back to the village i don't i didn't want anybody to ask me any stupid question so like these are all the things that you know i went through and i'm just so grateful and so thankful that i'm really out of that stage right now i use my situation to pray for anybody going through this that um it would it can still happen god is still in the business of doing miracles and your miracle is coming i won't wish my experience on anybody it was very a very 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 painful do you know how many days i would that night i would cry do you know how many times that like a husband i don't even know that i would weep times where like there was nothing that was more important times where i would resent like i would just resent god hmm. but today it's all a it's all in the past so i really thank god and um, i really 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 thank god i also want to use this video to pray for all those going through um the process of trying to conceive that you know god will hear you and meet you at your point of need Whatever you think is your situation, just believe that there is a God and He answers prayers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope these videos were not too long. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Amen. May we have God to continue to adore you and to worship you. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you for this day. Amen. I thank you for this day. Amen. I thank you for this day. Amen. One of the perks of being pregnant is that you can use your stomach.
my boy, you best beware. And though deep down I know I might be headed for teardrops. Now that you got me started, I just can't stop. No, no. Cause I love you, baby. I can't let you go, baby. I gotta tell you that I won't. I've been looking for love so true. 